Linda Post, and I am painter of all of these mysterious paintings of women, the sea, uncommon places. I am so happy to have this show of this body of work at Michelson Galleries because I've been working on it for a while, just about a decade, and I think that seeing all these pieces in one place is great for everybody who's been following my website and my blog post, but it's also been great for me because when all of these paintings are outside of my studio and in a place all together that isn't in my studio, it helps me look at them differently too, and it, it helps me plan my path forward. This piece here is the most recent piece that I've done. Um, it involves two girls. I think that the, the one on the left is kind of an apparition. And the one on the right is the dreamer. She's dreaming this whole situation. And she's also dreaming of being a little bit younger too, like the girl in the apparition. Um, she's thinking about her adolescence. And the birds are very much avatars. They're, they have personality. They, they carry the narrative forward. And I think that people will interpret the birds any way they want, and they'll also interpret the girls any way they want. Um, the narrative is meant to be somewhat mysterious. Many of the skies start out red. I like working with red as a background to the skies because when you start layering complementary colors on top, the oranges and the pinks and, um, and then the blues and the greens and aquas, they, it, it really gives the sky a whole lot of depth. And I do find that many of my paintings take place at a time of day where you don't really know if it's dawn or twilight. It's, you know, it's, it's a time of day where anything can happen, really. It's, it can go either way. This one is called um, Speaking the Language of Birds. And the model on the right in this one is the same model that was in the tutu and the black and white top in the newest painting that I've done. In this one, I aged her, and the other one, I made her younger. So I have, again, the artistic license to do what I want with, with these models and with the figures. Um, the, the seagull, I really wanted her to be in conversation with the seagull. So the seagull is speaking to her. I take a lot of photographs. When I travel, I take photographs. When I'm with people, I take photographs, and I, basically make a digital sketch before I start a painting. I take photographs of people, I take photographs of places, I take photographs of architectural elements like the, like the tents, I take photographs of different kinds of skies, different kinds of beaches. I'll, I'll take all these photographs and I will, in, I'll work in a, in a Photoshop and I will cut them out, basically, digitally, and I will put people together that have never met each other before in places that they've never been, and the places have things like the tents that have never been there, and I'll just keep putting things together until everything looks right. And before I start a painting, sometimes I can take like two or three months working on just the, all the different elements of it and trying to make it so that it just works. Mm -hmm. And once I have a digital composition that, that makes sense to me, that really looks good and I think will work well on a canvas, then I'll draw it out full size. One of the things that I really love about this one is, I again, I started out with the red sky thinking I was going to do my original concept was that it was going to be a blue summer sky with clouds floating across and that's what it was going to be. And then as I was working on this painting and I was watching how the, um, the, the figures 
parked against the red sky, and I was thinking, I don't want to paint over this. I think that hands can be just as expressive as faces in their own way. I really do. I talk with my hands a lot, as you can see. Um, and I, I do think that being able to um, draw and paint hands has always been really important to me because I think that um, it, it just gives something more to the paintings when you're a figurative painter. The raven is, you know, mythologically, it's, it has to do with good fortune and luck. And the raven is bringing her another ring as a gift. But you also think of, of ravens kind of like you think of a magpie, that they also steal <laughs> shiny objects too. So is it stealing it from her or is it giving it to her? I'm thinking it's giving it to her and I'm thinking that the, that the, um, the bird is actually a, an augur of good fortune. One of the things that, that you, know, you can see in this painting too is in the last maybe um, probably six or seven years I've started making my figures life size or bigger than life size. And to me I'm finding that really intriguing, especially as the paintings get larger. I want you to feel as if you can almost walk right into them. And, and be part of them. And I think making the figures life-size is something that really makes that happen. This one, which is called Golden Days, is, um, this is actually the, the last of the big paintings I did on wooden panels. And this was about as big as I could get, and then I realized that I couldn't really go much bigger. But she's also, um, a, a, a full size, a little bit oversized figure. And I think she was probably the first, the very first one that I did like that. And um, the tents in this one are bathed in a golden light and they have long shadows because of the time of day. The, the tent, this is the first time that you could see sort of the inside of one of these tents. And there's a mysterious person on the inside, which I think of as the young girl's kind of um, more grown-up alter ego. I was working on wooden panels because I really like the, um, the lack of bounce. I really like the hard surface. I'm really hard on paint. I work in a lot of layers. I use my fingers. I use rags to rub things. I use tools. And if you're working on canvas, a stretched canvas, then um, it, you, you have a chance of getting a hole in your canvas, which is never a good thing at all. And I felt like, well, I was working about as big as I could work on the wooden panels, and I was going to throw my back out if I started working even bigger on it, because I just couldn't move them around. Um, to work out the problem of the bounciness of the canvas, in fact, that I needed a hard surface. What I did was I, I bought rolls of big rolls of um, oil gessoed linen, and I thumbtacked huge pieces up on my wall, and then I started working on those. So I had a, a, a hard surface behind the canvas. This one went through an awful lot of changes. I um, I worked on it for quite a while, and then. After I take the canvas down off the wall, um, I figure out what the outside dimensions of the piece are going to be, because I usually, I paint it a little bit bigger than I think I'm going to need, mm -hmm. and then I figure out where it's actually going to be cut off, and I order um, a handmade wooden stretcher, I order it from California. And they send it in, and you put it together here in the Michelson Gallery on your, in your frame shop, which has great big tables to work on, unlike my studio. And then the framer here and I work on stretching the canvas together. Once it's stretched, it often changes my feeling about the painting in terms of bringing it back home again and working on it.